Pilsner's cat thought experiment doesn't mention one very important point. If you're using a mechanism that relies on quantum uncertainty to either kill or not kill a cat in a closed box, the cat will both be dead and alive at the same time, at least until you look. If you have a quantum system where a quantum event can play out in two ways, the particle will literally be in both states at the same time until something interacts with the particle to check it. However, this experiment wouldn't work in reality. On our scale, the universe is like a sandstorm, but instead of sand, it's teeny tiny particles. The box Schrodinger's cat is in is in this bath of particles as well. So information about the cat is still getting in and out of the box. At no point was it in a alive dead quantum superposition. As things get smaller, more and more time passes between events where a particle hits or interacts with us. So the reason why Schrodinger's thought experiment wouldn't work is because a cat is just too big to not interact with something, unless of course you had a magical black box that could separate the inside from the outside of the box completely. Schrodinger's cat thought experiment can be extended to make a box that doesn't just contain one cat, but one cat that is two cats at the same time. There are various ways to entangle particles, but particles are extremely small, so they are subject to the effects of the quantum world. How do we go about entangling large objects? Let's start with two boxes. They both have doors or removable separators between them. Inside the boxes, you have a radioactive source and a radiation detector. But instead of triggering something to kill the occupant of the box, it's attached to a speaker that emits the sound of dogs barking. Now, let's say you've got two antisocial cats. The speaker emits a barking noise at random, startling the cats, which causes them to jump back and forth between the two boxes. After a while of this, the doors between the two boxes shut. Because the two cats are avoiding each other, they will end up in separate boxes once the doors close. You can now separate the boxes. If the boxes were like Schrodinger's magic box, the two cats will now be entangled between the two boxes. Most of us naively think banks receive deposits and loan the money out to others to make money on the interest. Well, that's not exactly how it works. The vast majority of the money that moves between banks, especially this day and age, are just numbers and losses that they need to keep 10% of the money they loan on hand. On a side note here, this number was actually reduced to zero at the start of the pandemic. So let's say you deposit $100, the bank doesn't take 90 of those $100 to loan out. Since the money moves as simple numbers, they loan out $900 with that $100 you gave them. Because 900 plus 100 is 1000 and 100 is 10% of 1,000. This is why banks want your money, because it's worth 9x to them than it is to you. And on top of that, the money they lent to somebody else can be deposited into another bank account, and that bank can do the same thing, although each time to a lesser extent. But in the end, each dollar of cash you deposited can actually back 99 other dollars that are just numbers in a bank's computer. Why does the US use the Electoral College to elect their presidents? Twice in the last 25 years, the president who won the popular vote lost the election. That was Bush versus Gore in 2000 and Trump versus Hillary in 2016. So, as you might imagine, the desire to replace the system with a direct one has been strong, especially among Democrats. Mm. Although it could be argued that in those cases, the Electoral College operated exactly how it was designed to. Up until the Revolutionary War, the United States had been separate colonies. So, more like countries. Because of that, people from small states especially were afraid of something they called the tyranny of the majority, where the high populous states would have near complete control over the federal government. If the apportionment were to result in a state getting less than three electors, then the state would get to appoint three electors anyway. This gave the small states slightly more power in presidential elections. But this brings us to the modern system. It still retains some of the protection for small states. Whenever we'll talk about going to Mars, why is it they always do it in increments of two years? Why wouldn't SpaceX be able to launch as soon as they're ready, rather than two years from now? This is because it's easier to launch to Mars when the Earth and Mars are in certain places in their orbits. When they are in a favorable position, it's called a home and transfer window. It's pretty much impossible for any known rocket to attempt a home and transfer outside certain window periods. It doesn't make it impossible, however. The Escapade mission is a pair of small spacecraft, only weighing around 600 pounds, but they got a deep discount to fly in the new Glenn because of the risks associated with flying on new rockets. The ridiculous amount of extra margin the rocket has gives NASA the extra flexibility to launch outside the normal launch window. Now, a fully re fueled starship would get to Mars outside the window. Most of the white area, especially for time periods less than a year, are off limits to even Starship, so even Starship won't free spaceflight completely from having to take advantage of transfer windows. The fear is that someone will make compromising AI-generated images 
most AI tools don't allow you to upload someone's likeness without charging you money. So it's only worth it to a scammer if you're wealthy. Also, one thing all these tools have in common is that they limit the ability of the user from doing certain things. So for a scammer to actually make a fake version of you, they would have to run all these AI tools on their own computer hardware, which of course would cost millions, right? Well, look at me now. Looks pretty good, huh? The scary part is I did all of this on my own computer, but I could use these tools to make myself look like anyone. All I need is a few images from your social media. So models you can run on your own computer locally can not only make images and videos of people that look like you, they are also capable of making those images very compromising. It's made even easier if they already have some compromising images of you. Even though the tools do exist, they're still quite complicated to set up and use. So should you be worried about this? Not unless you have a tech-savvy X, you burned really bad. Almost a year ago I did a video on how long the voice SpaceX still had to go. In light of what they just did, have I changed my mind? Catching the booster is much easier and forgiving than the equally important aspect of Elon's plan, which is to get to the Starship. The ship, unlike the booster, doesn't have those two pins popping on either side. The system the booster is using allows for a bit of error and speed position and rotation. The Starship appears to use a hitch-style mechanism to be cut by the tower arms, where the caching tower has two pins that act like a truck and ball hitch, and the Starship has two cup tolls that interface with the ball hitches. Anyone who has struggled with trying to line up a trailer hitch can attest to how difficult it can be. It's going to take a lot of precision for the tower to get its pins into both of the starship's holes at the same time. The tolerance for such a system is probably going to be much less forgiving, so that little bit of rotation the Brewster had upon landing would probably result in a missed catch for the starship. Do I think all these different factors can be overcome? Yes. I'm now about as sure SpaceX can get the ship as it was last year that they could catch a booster. So is there a way to get to the moon and back using only SpaceX's starship? The big issue with using only Starship is that the Starship Lunar Lander is not going to have a heat shield, which means it wouldn't be able to scrub off the speed of returning from the moon using Earth's atmosphere, so it would not be able to return from the moon without refueling in lunar orbit. And the astronauts would still need another Starship to launch and dock with the lander to return them to the Earth. This is how it could be done. Launch and refuel up a regular Starship. This would be the Earth return Starship. That Starship would then travel to lunar orbit uncrewed. The Lunar Lander would launch uncrewed. The crew could then launch on a regular starship and then transfer to the lunar lander. The lander would then fly to the moon and land. The astronauts would then be able to return to lunar orbit and dock with the mostly fueled up regular Earth return starship. Using the heat shield, the Earth return starship could either return and land directly. This architecture not only reduces complexity, but it adds the ability to fall back on Falcon 9 if something goes wrong. This simple effect is critically important for the smallest single-celled organism all the way to the most complex multi-celled organism. If you have a lot more water than oil, the oil quickly gets corralled by the polar water. We try to fight this effect when we wash dishes. We add soap. Soap is a special kind of molecule. It has a long non-polar hydrocarbon chain, but also on one end, it has what's called a polar head. The polar head likes water, while the hydrocarbon chains like oil. If you mix soap with water and agitate it without oil, water trapped inside the soap gets trapped in a shell called a liposome. Liposomes create an isolated polar environment inside the Liposome. The liposome is actually the most fundamental building block for life. That bilayer acts the same as a very simple cell membrane. So liposomes are basically the same thing as a cell, but with all the equipment that's needed to eat, grow, and reproduce. It's theories that life started when just the right molecules ended up inside of liposomes to make the first cells. One of the big issues was the fragility of the heat shield on Starship. My thought was that they may have to make a big change, well guess what? Elon recently hinted that they may be doing just that. The heat shield has allowed Starship to survive re-entry, however, in all three flights, it was damaged. Starship's sixth flight prompted Elon to comment that an active heat shield is back on the table. I predicted over a year ago that after they had the data from the new re-entries, they might do that. Now, I don't think that they will get rid of the entire ceramic heat shield. So, what are the two other options? The first is simple active cooling, where the rocket nozzle is made out of hundreds of tiny pipes through which oxidizer repellent flow, which are often extremely cold. Another technique is to use a vapor barrier. This is what causes the dark sooty smoke over the flames of the Saturn V. Obviously, this technique would have to be modified to work with the heat shield. They'll probably work incrementally to see how little active heat shield they can get away with. That probably means it'll be a while before we know exactly what form it will take.